Okay. You can start. You are mute. Okay. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I'm here today from the Center for Hearing and Communication. My name is Carolyn Stern. Um, I have with me here one of our top audiologists, Shelby Platia. And we're happy to discuss the second part of our education with your center. We gave a talk in July. If you were able to join us, that's great. If not, I believe it was recorded and you can locate that wherever Maggie, um, Mar Mar Maggie, uh, Margie uh, restores, restores it. Yeah, it's, a, it's on our YouTube correct? channel. It's on okay, our YouTube. on the YouTube channel. And today we're gonna to be focusing on uh, technology specifically related to, I just wanna make sure, do you see the right slide before I move on, Shelby? Yes, it's just okay. not in full screen. So if okay. you want to hit full screen. Yeah. Okay, should be loading. Yep, still loading. Okay. Um, and before we jump in, I just wanted us to both introduce ourselves to you. And at the same time, you are welcome to introduce yourself to us in, by using the chat, if you're comfortable using the chat, and if you'd like us to know anything about, about your hearing status or um, if you're comfortable, because again, this is a public environment. Um, otherwise, we will share our contact with you at the end if there's anything you would like to review privately with us. Okay, so um, I've been in the Center for Hearing Communication for um, several years. And I also managing our outreach initiatives, like programs like this and other types of programs like attending health fairs and other types of educational programming. And I also have a hearing loss myself. So I'm very empathetic to the condition and the challenges. Um, and I do currently use two cochlear implants that are sort of like hearing aids, but they also have a surgically implanted component in my uh, cochlear of my ear and they work remarkably. I received them because I got to a point where hearing aids were no longer uh, working for me. My hearing loss had progressed so much um, and our center helped people with all degrees of hearing loss, all issues. So I just wanted to have Shelby introduce herself to you and then we'll move on. Yes. Hi, everyone. My name is Shelby Plady. I'm an audiologist at the Center for Hearing and Communication. Um, I'm now approaching my third year at CHC. Um, I was there as a resident and, uh, and then hired there as a full-time audiologist after I finished my degree. Um, I work predominantly with adults, providing them with hearing evaluations, uh, hearing aid uh, consultations, fittings, um, and comprehensive evals as well. Uh, and I also work with individuals for central auditory processing disorder evaluations. Um, and I'm part of our adult outreach uh, team that you know, provides uh, service and education, screenings and, and diagnostic evaluations um, to you know, senior centers throughout the tri-state area. Okay, terrific. All right, so, um... I'm going to move on to our one second. So this, this the, the agenda today uh, will be, we want you to know a little bit about our organization. We could be a valuable resource for you for services and or just education information from our website. Um, and we also have an e-newsletter. If you would like to be on the e-newsletter, you know, please send one of us an email with your email contact. And we will be happy to add you. We send communications out about once a quarter on relevant topics related to hearing loss. Okay, we're going to be covering hearing aid technology and assistive devices that can help people with hearing loss, as well as address the new hearing aid category coming out called over-the-counter hearing aids. We want to inform you a little bit about that topic and give you some things, some guidelines around it. There are also a slew of devices that can help people with hearing loss live more safely in their home and, and when they're out and about, as well as apps for smartphones if you use a smartphone as well. And then uh, now that most many people are emerging out of the pandemic and starting to return to 
entertainment out of the home, such as theater and attending movies. We wanted to share with you some ways to make those experiences more accessible for people with hearing loss with captions and also improved audio uh, amplification. Okay, so Center for Hearing Communication. Uh, for those of you who have joined, joined us before, uh, I will keep this brief, but we are a nonprofit hearing health agency located in Lower Manhattan, and we also have a Fort Lauderdale location. We've been around for a long time in New York City. We used to be known, the league, known as the League for the Hard of Hearing or the New York League. Sometimes, sometimes that rings a bell for people. And we also used to be located on Chelsea, in the Chelsea neighborhood, but now we're downtown near Battery Park City. So we may be a bit of a hike for some of you, depending on where you live in New York City or elsewhere. Um, a lot of our services are provided in person, but we also do do a lot of telehealth. And some areas of audiology can be delivered through telehealth or phone, or phone call or a video call. And we've really progressed in the way that we deliver our services since the pandemic started. So we are somewhat flexible depending on what you need to have done. Um, and we are a, really a one-stop shop for hearing health. We provide ENT services uh, on a limited basis. Um, two times a month, we have an ENT come in that who can remove wax and check any issues going on in the ear. And then we have four clinical areas, audiology, where Shelby works, and she will tell you more about that, but that's like hearing testing, hearing evaluation, helping you figure out which hearing device might be the best one for you, training you on your hearing device, and helping you along the way. If anything happens to the device, if it gets broken, if it's not working, if you need an upgrade, this is their whole area. In addition to some other specialty services like tinnitus or ringing in the ear, if you are experiencing that issue, we have um, some. We can provide some assistance there, provided that you um, meet the criteria that are required for that program. But we can also just provide, provide general guidance. We have a speech pathology department for. We do a lot with young children in that area, helping young children who are born deaf and hard of hearing get ready to be successful in their schooling years, as well as learning how to communicate effectively and use amplification. But for adults, we also do um, a lot of work with some, it's sort of like physical therapy for the ear, but it's called auditory training. And once an individual gets hearing aids, we can do some of that work with the individual to help you uh, perform better with your hearing aids in challenging listening situations like groups or book clubs or parties, things like that. And we have emotional, an emotional health and wellness department. I really wanted to spend a minute on this. People really underestimate the emotional impact that not hearing well can have on an individual, especially an older adult. Uh, perhaps you had good hearing most of your life and now this is suddenly creeping up on you um, and knocking out your self-confidence and your ability to remain independent. Make, make phone calls independently, manage doctor appointments independently because the communication has become so challenging. And um, hearing loss can also impact relationships and communication, strain on communication in relationships. And so we have a slew of um, mental health professionals who can help. We have a psychologist, we have social workers, we even have a psychiatrist who can help with any medication needs, uh, monitoring medication. And all of these professionals happen to also be fluent in sign language. Again, that may not be your mode of communication, but it's just good for you to know that we work with the entire population, whether someone speaks or signs. Um, and then for any of you who may be connected to a family with a child who is born deaf or hard of hearing or acquires a hearing loss, some some point of their young adult, young years, we have an education department that can help with this area, with transitioning to school, helping them be successful in the entire um, education journey. Okay, so that's who we are. And some people say we're the best kept secret in New York. So I hope you um, enjoy discovering who we are. So I'm gonna pass it along to Shelby now, who's gonna talk about the, probably the hottest topic everybody wants to know about, 
um, hearing <laughs> needs. So Thank go you. ahead, Shelby. Thank you, Carolyn. So yeah, just to mimic what Carolyn said earlier, we did a first session, which was a, a bit more basic information regarding hearing aids and, and some other things. So please feel free to um, locate that video on YouTube if you were not able to attend the first session. Uh, today, we will focus more on um, advanced technology in terms of hearing aids and other connectivity options that you may have. Um, you know, so first and foremost, uh, Bluetooth connectivity has become uh, a huge perk of hearing aid devices. Uh, for those of you who, who may not be familiar with what Bluetooth is or how it works, um, essentially if you have, for example, a hearing aid with Bluetooth capabilities and you have a device such as a smartphone, like an iPhone or an Android, Maybe you even have a tablet, um, an iPad, or, or any other Bluetooth device, you would be able to connect the hearing aids wirelessly to that device. So that way, any audio streaming that would occur can go directly to the hearing aids. So again, for an example, if you are someone who uses an iPhone and you have a Bluetooth capable hearing aid, um, you may be able to connect wirelessly to your iPhone. So that way when you receive phone calls or if you listen to audio books, um, the audio itself will go directly into the hearing aids allowing for greater access of the sound. Hearing aids, most hearing aids, I should say, um, come with uh, the option to have a uh, telecoil um, or to be T-coil enabled. Um, what this is, is that it is basically allows for you to um, connect to uh, looped systems all throughout New York City and all throughout the country. So that way, if you are in a specific looped system, you would be able to have the sound go from wherever the sound source is coming from into the hearing aid when the T-coil option is enabled. Um, so if you see in the bottom right hand corner, the picture of the ear with the little T, uh, you may see this, um, you know, in certain uh, museums, uh, Broadway shows, movie theaters, I know, you know, the, the yellow taxi cabs in New York City and all of the subway station booths with the workers inside, um, all of those environments are T-coil enabled, meaning that if you have this program, if, if you have the access to the T-coil in your hearing aid, you would be able to access that program and the sound would go directly into your hearing aids. Um, you know, this is very popular among individuals who are regular goers to movie theaters, Broadway shows, um, and, and can really allow for greater access of the sound and, and uh, greater participation in whatever activity you are doing. Um, if this is something that is important to you, and maybe if you're someone who's considering getting hearing aids, or maybe if you already have hearing aids, I would recommend talking to your audiologist or your hearing care professional and to tell them that this is something that you want to have the option to use um, because there are certain hearing aids that come without T-coil, without the T-coil option. So just keep that in mind. Hearing aids now have um, advanced significantly. So maybe you know a family member who used hearing aids you know, 15, 20 years ago, um, it's very possible that they did not have a great experience with their hearing aids and that they felt like, um, you know, it was still very difficult to communicate, especially hearing in background noise. Um, but now with today's technology, there are what we call directional microphones on the hearing aids um, and, and multiple microphones on the hearing aid, on the hearing aids themselves. And what these microphones do is that, you know, inside the hearing aid is a specialized computer chip that is working um, to basically analyze your environment to see, okay, where is the speech signal coming from? If you're communicating with someone out at a restaurant and maybe someone's sitting to the right of you, the hearing aid's gonna hone in on the speech information 
while simultaneously trying to analyze the environment to reduce any background or ambient noise um, that would impede conversation uh, and, and overall effective communication. Hearing aids now are made for, um, for smartphones, made for iPhones, Androids, and almost all of the hearing aid manufacturers have come out with their own specific hearing aid apps um, so that if your hearing aid is, again, going back to Bluetooth connectivity, if your hearing aid is capable of being connected to your smartphone device, um, you would have the option through these hearing aid specific apps to make changes to your devices, such as um, adjusting the volume, um, accessing different programs, if you have different programs enabled, such as the T-Coil program. Um, hearing aids now come with a, a wonderful feature called Find My Hearing Aid. Um, maybe you've heard similar saying like Find My iPhone, uh, where essentially if you allow location services to be enabled for your hearing aid specific app, um, then it will track the location of the hearing aid. So that way, if you're you know, running errands and putting on and taking off your mask, and all of a sudden, if you realize at the end of the day, oh no, I dropped my hearing aid, I don't have one on, you can look at the map and see where the general location is and say, oh, you know, is that, it's at Trader Joe's or it's at Whole Foods. Um, let me go back there and try to find the device. Um, additionally, with... Uh, with the hearing aid apps, uh, this will also allow for remote programming and, and teletherapy services, um, meaning where, again, if you have the capability with your hearing device um, and your audiologist is also capable for remote programming, then you may be able to set up a virtual appointment so that way you can stay in the comfort of your own home and meet with your audiologist on the, the specific app to have a virtual appointment. And then it, certain adjustments can be made to the devices. Um, unfortunately, not everything can be done remotely. You know, there may be some services that will require you to go in person for adjustments, but this is still a great perk um, that has kind of come through uh, with, with advancements in hearing aid technology. And one last thing on this slide that I want to touch upon um, is just re rechargeable hearing aids. Um, now, for the most part, there are two types of hearing aids, one that goes completely in the ear, and then one that goes over the ear with the wire um, uh, kind of against your head and a piece that goes inside. Um, for the most part, it is the type of hearing aid, if you look down on the slide, the, the two hearing aids to the left, the behind the ear and the receiver in the canal, for the most part, those are going to be the hearing aids that will be allowed for um, rechargeability, meaning that you no longer have to change the battery on a consistent basis. Uh, for most hearing aids, on average, you have to change the battery uh, around every four to seven days. The cost of batteries can become expensive over time. Um, it can be frustrating, you know, having to change this very small um, thing in the hearing aid, especially if you are someone with, who has dexterity issues. Uh, so a lot of people have uh, really enjoyed the fact that they can pursue a rechargeable hearing aid meaning that at night, when you're done using the hearing aids, when you're about to go to sleep, you simply place them in the docking charger. Um, they charge while you sleep. You don't have to worry about overcharging. They typically only take a few hours to fully charge. And by the time you wake up, you're ready to go. You take the hearing aids out, you put them on, and you can start your day. Now I'm going to bring up some accessories and assistive listening devices um, that can help improve communication and overall quality of life. 
Um, you know, again, we kind of touched upon some of the hearing aid basics the first session, but just a quick reminder, you know, hearing aids are not a cure for hearing loss. Um, you know, they will not allow you to hear like you did when you were, you know, 20 years old, maybe if you did have normal hearing at that time. So hearing aids do require um, a lot of different communication strategies, maybe modifying your environment, modifying where you sit or where you situate yourself in a group and different things like that. But even with the most appropriate set hearing aids, even with you utilizing um, specific communication strategies, there may still be environments where you struggle significantly with communication. Um, and in these environments, they may, you, may, um, you may require additional accessories, additional devices in order to communicate optimally. The devices listed, they, they, there are specific devices for each manufacturer. So I'm gonna talk about them in a very general sense. Um, and they do typically cost um, you know, anywhere from a few hundred dollars um, to some devices that can be a bit more expensive um, that can maybe possibly range around $1,000. So that is also something to keep in mind. Um, but the, the first device that I, I wanna bring up is the what's called an FM device, a frequency modulated device. Out of all the devices listed, this would be the most expensive device. Um, and, and essentially what it does is, is you have a receiver, um, which you would have to, to purchase for your specific hearing aid. Um, and then there are different types of FM devices that can be used in specific environments. Um, so there's FM devices called, for example, um, the Roger pen, where it, it almost looks like a pen. Uh, this is the bottom right image. Um, essentially what an FM device does is when it is activated, you can give the specific device to a speaker. So for example, if you were going out and, and listening to a lecture, if you were going out to you know, your city hall, listening to a lecture, listening to a presentation, and there's one main speaker, you can give them the FM device and they can wear it or put it on their little podium. Um, and as they're speaking, the sound is gonna go directly into the FM device and be transferred to your hearing aids. Regardless of how much background noise is going on, regardless of how far you are sitting up, um, you know, maybe if you're sitting in the middle to back of the auditorium, um, you will hear the speaker's voice almost as if you were sitting right next to them. There are other FM devices um, that are um, considered table mics, where you can put them on a table and it essentially does the same thing, but the microphone of the device is designed to pick up multiple speakers around you. So for example, at a conference table or um, you know, maybe out to dinner in, with low background noise, you can use that device and it can pick up um, individuals in, in a circle around you. And again, allow for greater access of the sound um, and, and decrease the overall distance from you and the speaker. Some cheaper options um, that works in a similar way, um, but I will say that the, the signal strength may not be as strong, um, you know, and, and it may be a little bit more um, limited in terms of distance and overall background noise that it's picked up, um, but the second bullet of, of remote mics. Um, essentially what this device, um, how this device serves is that if, if you decide to get your own specific manufacturer's remote mic, um, you can turn on the device and in a similar way, give it to one other person to speak into. So that way it allows for greater access of the speech signal. Um, some examples that I give my own clients in terms of what this device may be good for is if you are, um, let's say you're cooking dinner with someone, you know, maybe you're with a family member and you may be sitting down chopping up vegetables and maybe they're preparing, you know, a salad or preparing something else. 
a few feet away from you. Maybe your backs are to each other. Um, so it's very difficult for you to hear the individual, but if they put on the remote mic, then their voice will go directly into that device and straight to your hearing aids. Uh, another example I like to give is, is sitting in a car. Um, oftentimes communication in a car can be very difficult, especially if you're the one who is sitting maybe in the back seat and you're trying to communicate with someone in the front seat. Again, they can put this device on so that way their voice is picked up and sent directly to your hearing aids. There are also accessories for the television. So if you, you know, have hearing aids and you still feel like you are turning up the volume on your TV and maybe this is a source of contention for, um, you know, your living partners, um, there are accessories for the TV where you can connect directly to the hearing aids and so that the sound is going directly into your hearing aids and you can control your own personal volume while the individual that you're watching TV with, um, or even if they're not watching TV, if they're in another room, they can keep the volume at a level that's comfortable for them. Um, there are other devices that are considered um, intermediary devices or, or, or third devices where if you need to connect to a device that does not allow for automatic connection, um, you would pursue this type of intermediary device in order to connect both devices. Um, that may sound a little confusing, so I'm going to give you an example. Um, a lot of individuals, especially during the pandemic, because they started to use pla virtual platforms like Zoom, um, Microsoft Teams, uh, a lot of individuals have complained that it's very hard to hear uh, the audio coming from the computer, even with their hearing aids on. So there is a device that you can, can that you can get in order to connect the hearing aids to that device, and then connect that device to your computer. So that way, the audio streaming from your computer would then go directly into your hearing aids. Um, Shelby, do you want to? Do you think what I'm using right now is an example of what you're talking about? Yes. Yeah, so, so if you okay. want to, if you want to bring that up, and if you want to discuss, yeah. it, yep. Okay, so just to highlight, um, I don't know how many of you can actually see me. Um, it's Carolyn speaking now. I think I'm pinned. So what I'm wearing now is an intermediary device, what Shelby's speaking about. I'm holding it up. I don't know if you can see it, but it's like a, a almost a square shaped silver body with a loop wire that I wear around my neck. And then this device is very specifically designed to be able to use with my particular hearing devices. What does it do? It allows me to connect the audio coming from the computer or the laptop directly into this device. So I'm holding up a black wire that came with the device. I plug the black, black wire into the device. And then the other end of the black wire I'm plugging it into my speakers. So I don't know, if, can, can you see, I'm holding up my speakers right now and I'm plugging it in. Sometimes you can plug it directly into the, um, into the computer itself. You can plug it directly into the laptop. This is just the way I'm setting it up right now into the sp portable speakers that I have, okay? Then that way the audio coming out from the computer is traveling from the wire into this device and then it has a way to transmit through this wire directly into my hearing aids, um, hearing devices. And this has been a lifesaver for me. Some people can do it wirelessly. Mm -hmm. This one, I'm not, I'm not doing it wirelessly right now. I'm doing it with, a, it's called direct connect. And people use this, like you could direct connect to a radio, you could direct connect to um, the TV, actually, if you wanted to plug it in. Um, or maybe you have like a portable transistor radio that you're walking around. You could actually plug it right in there and then you can get good audio directly into your ear. I hope that explains it a little bit. This is just one example of many different products available out there. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that, Carolyn. And, and um, you know, as she said, it, some can 
connect wirelessly, some require a wired connection. Um, it all depends on the type of hearing aids that you're using and also possibly the type of device that you want to connect to. Um, so if that's something that you're interested in, again, I would recommend talking to your audiologist if you have hearing aids currently, um, or if you are thinking of pursuing hearing aids, you know, bring that up if that's something that is important for you. Um, and then just the last bullet on the slide, um, in terms of phone streamers, um, these are, I would say, becoming a little bit more outdated just based on the fact that a lot of hearing aids now can connect directly to most um, smartphone devices, at least. Um, but certainly if there, if you have a phone that does not allow for direct connection, then um, a phone streamer would be an option for you in terms of the specific hearing aid that you are using. Okay. I see some questions in the chat, but why don't we get through some of the material and then we'll answer some of the questions. Sounds good, sounds good. So there are some lower cost options that are emerging. Um, you know, a big barrier to obtaining hearing aids, at least what research has shown, is the financial aspect of, of the, and the cost of hearing aids. Um, so, you know, there are lower cost options that, you know, may be appropriate for you. Um, you know, unfortunately, some of these lower cost options may have limited fit um, and overall connectivity options, you know, they may not have uh, all the bells and whistles that may be what is needed for your communication needs. So that's something that's important to consider. Um, we are going to discuss over the counter hearing aids in the next slide. So I'm going to skip over that just for this part. Um, and then there, are, there have been some consumer electronic band, brands such as Bose, Google, Apple, um, who have, you know, attempted to kind of get into the hearing aid market. Um, I will say that this, this, these type of uh, lower cost options, I, I, I think the best way to describe them is a revolving door um, because we've seen that, you know, sometimes these brands try to get into the market and then after some time they pull back and say, you know what, we're not going to um, you know, we're not going to do this anymore. I'm pretty sure Bose was the most recent one um, to kind of backtrack and say, you know, we're not going to offer any hearing aid type devices. Okay, so this has been, it has become a very popular and hot topic um, in the field of audiology, um, and they are called over-the-counter hearing aids, um, you know, which are an anticipated to launch uh, fall of this year. Originally, they were going to launch much earlier, but with the pandemic, um, uh, it kind of pushed everything back. They are considered a uh, new self-fit category of hearing aids that are regulated by the FDA. Um, it's a little bit different than what we would consider prescription hearing aids, um, you know, meaning hearing aids that you would go to an audiologist or an ENT or a hearing facility um, and get through an audiologist and have it specifically set up and programmed by the hearing care professional. Um, they are designed, according to the FDA, they are designed for individuals with perceived mild to moderate hearing loss. Uh, they are only available for individuals 18 or older, um, and they uh, can be obtained either online or in certain retail stores. One thing that I want to highlight, um, which is very important, is that uh, in order to obtain these devices, they do not, the FDA does not require a hearing test or prescription um, from a medical professional. Um, and this is something that, you know, while we, we view OTC hearing aids as, as a positive in the sense that it is gonna uh, broaden the market of hearing aids, hopefully allow them to become more affordable and more accessible for individuals because ultimately our goal is to treat the hearing loss and to um, treat the hearing loss as soon as possible. Um, but one thing that, you know, we kind of take a step back and that we highly, highly recommend is getting a hearing test, um, 
before you consider purchasing any type of hearing device, um, because that's truly the way to determine if your hearing loss levels would be, would be considered um, uh, having you as a candidate for these devices. Um, New York State also requires that you get medical clearance for prescription hearing aids um, by an otologist before you are fit with any devices. Um, but this is something that the FDA is not requiring for the over-the-counter hearing aids. The reason why medical clearance is important is because if there are any contraindications or any um, factors that may be involved that may prevent you from being a hearing aid candidate or other medical issues that need to be addressed first, this is the, the way that those, um, the, this is the follow-up that would be recommended in order to see if you can actually be fit with the hearing aids. Um, some products will require a smartphone for setup and controls. Um, so if you're someone who's not necessarily tech savvy, then this may not be an appropriate device for you. Um, and it's very important to check uh, what the return policy is and what the warranty is um, because of the fact that, you know, uh, we don't know how much time you would have with these devices. Um, and I just saw a question pop up into the chat that is very relevant for this. So I, I appreciate the question. Um, our stance at CHC is that we want to help any individual who comes in with hearing needs. So if we have individuals come in and they say, okay, you know, I just purchased an over-the-counter hearing aid, um, but I'm having some difficulty with it, we will say that, you know, we do require a hearing test prior to um, making, you know, any adjustments or, or really helping with the fit of the device, because we have to make sure that it is an appropriate device for you. Um, but we are certainly willing and able to help you as much as possible with these devices. Um, the only one downside right now is that there's still a lot of unknown because the market has not fully come out yet. So we even don't know how they're going to be specifically set up or how they're going to be specifically fit. So it's kind of we are trying to adjust and adapt um, with more and more as more and more information comes out. Um, but we will certainly not turn any anyone away if they come in with these type of devices. Um, of course, there may be some cost associated with us helping you with these devices, um, you know, because they are purchased at an outside facility. Um, so that that can be expected, but we are certainly willing to help individuals with these devices. Um, and just so everyone's aware, Medicare and Medicaid will cover hearing test evaluations. Um, and most insurances will actually cover hearing test evaluation. So if you're unsure if you would be a candidate, then that's something that we would recommend. Okay, thank you, Shelby, for all that information. Um, and just OTCs are technically supposed to be launching in about three weeks, officially. Can I, um, I'm sorry, can I just, if anyone has questions and they're not comfortable using the chat, please unmute, I can't unmute you, please unmute yourself and ask the question. I just want to make sure that we don't restrict the questions, particularly oh. this, that's an important, this is an important topic that we haven't restricted the questions only to people in chat. So sure. I'm just going to ask if you have any questions, this is your time to do it or yeah, so then if we're doing that, then I, I would like to answer some of the questions in the chat, if that's okay, Karen. Absolutely. I think that would um, be a good idea. Yep. So I, I had one question um, that was sent to me about, um, you know, what devices would be appropriate for individuals with poor dexterity uh, skills and poor um, uh, or, or not tech savvy, I should say. Um, it's really something that you have to discuss with your audiologist. Um, you know, in, in terms of me, when a client comes to me and I notice that there are a lot of dexterity issues, meaning, you know, the ability to operate, um, you know, small devices with your fingers, sometimes we will consider a hearing aid that may be much bigger, um, that may just fit directly in the ear because it's usually something that is easier to hold, e easier to carry and easier to insert. Um, you know, it may certainly change some of the recommendations that we make in terms of the type of hearing aid that we recommend 
or even um, the piece that is coupled to the hearing aid that goes in the ear, because there are some pieces that um, are a little bit easier to operate and easier to manipulate than others. Um, in terms of tech skills, uh, you know, I, I always approach everyone saying sometimes less is more. So while it's great that there are all these connectivity options out there, while it's great that, you know, um, there are all these devices that can be used, if it is going to be more cumbersome for you, if it's going to be more difficult to operate for you, then you may not be considered a candidate for some of these devices. And then we can try to find a different means of helping whatever situation it is um, that you're struggling for. Um, and then uh, someone asked about, you know, what type of hearing aids are, are specifically designed for the type of hearing loss that you have. Um, you know, the nerve damage type hearing loss was brought up, but really the, the most of the, the most appropriate way to determine what type of device is appropriate for the type of hearing loss that you have is to go to an audiologist, is to have your hearing tested. Um, so that way, uh, the most appropriate recommendation could be made. Um, you know, it, it's, it's a little hard to tell over Zoom and, and just by saying type of hearing loss, because if there are other things that are going on um, that need to be looked at through an ENT, um, or if, if there, it's a type of hearing loss that can be medically treated, um, you know, that's why we want you to come in for the hearing test so we can make the appropriate recommendations and then in terms of follow-up care and also the type of device that we would recommend. And then the last question I noticed was, um, what about earphones? Um, I think that came in while we were talking about connecting to the computer. Some people will use headphones. Um, some people say that they actually prefer their headphones over their hearing aid devices in terms of communicating uh, or hearing through their computer. That's fine. If you have a device that you feel like you can put on um, and you can hear effectively with, then we recommend just using that type of device. Um, not for all day use, of course, you know, once you're done with your Zoom session, take off the headphones and put back on your hearing aids. Um, but that's not uncommon that, that, you know, we hear individuals say, oh, well, I work better with these earplugs or I work with these headphones. Um, so I choose to use that. So that's perfectly fine as well. Um, and then one last question that just came in, Carolyn, feel free to jump in if you need to. Um, but one last question is that, you know, is it true um, that Medicare will pay for hearing aids? This, as of right now, Medicare does not cover the cost of hearing devices. Um, you may have managed care plans that may offer a hearing aid benefit, but as of right now, Medicare will not cover hearing devices. Um, there have been some talks that it's possible to be, um, you know, in the works for the future, but we have no way of knowing if it's going to be limited to one or both ears. We have no way of knowing if it's going to be limited to the type of hearing aid um, that they would pay for or the levels of technology. So it's not really something that I could comment on right now, but at this day and time, Medicare does not cover the cost of hearing aids. Yeah, I just wanted to weigh in that, that coverage of hearing aids was rolled into the Build Back Better bill that President Biden was trying to push through in late December of 2021. And one of the compromises, I believe, to get that bill to pass was to remove any language around, uh, any provision around Medicare, picking up dental care, um, hearing aids, and maybe one other area. I think it was definitely dental and hearing aids. So that now is off the table. We were hopeful. And if it did go through, it was likely only going to be covering Medicare, Medicare hearing aids for more significant hearing losses, not the mild moderate. I guess the thinking is the OT, the over-the-counter hearing aids that Shelby was speaking with would be funded by the individuals who have mild to moderate losses because they're technically less expensive. But again, less expensive may still be very expensive for some people, uh, but cheaper than hearing aids, prescription hearing aids. 
So no, there's still a lot of lobbying and efforts going on in this area, but I don't see it happening in the next year or two. We'll have, we'll have to see. Okay. Um, all right. I'm trying to decide what we should do with our time. We have 15 minutes left. Uh, there is one we, additional, I'm sorry, there's an additional question. Somebody asked, can you discuss behind the air versus in the air? Sure. Yep, yep. Um, so there are two different types of hearing aids. The, the in the ear hearing aid is, is a hearing aid that can um, vary in size. And Carolyn, if you actually don't mind going back to the slideshow really quick um, and going back a few slides, because there is a picture showing the different types of hearing aids. Essentially, I'll, I'll give a very brief um, description of both because this can be a much longer discussion and I just want to make sure we have enough time for other material. Um, but there are types of hearing aids that go just in the ear. So this slide right here. So everything that you see on the bottom of the slide going from in the ear, um, kind of the beige uh, hearing aid all the way to the right. From, so from the middle to the right, um, those are different in the ear style hearing aids that will vary in size. Um, and you may be appropriate for it may be appropriate for you, depending on the shape of your ear canal, um, the connectivity options and Bluetooth options you're looking for, because the smaller the hearing aid, the more uh, capabilities that the hearing aid has will reduce um, because there's just not enough room in the hearing aid itself to have everything in there. Um, sometimes these hearing aids are more appropriate for individuals with dexterity issues. Um, versus the uh, behind the ear type hearing aids, the two hearing aids to the left, um, because it's, you know, two pieces that you now have to put on one, not only in the ear, but also a device that goes behind the ear. Um, sometimes we recommend these type of hearing aids. Um, we, uh, let me backtrack. We may recommend one type of hearing aid over the other, depending on your hearing loss levels. Um, so it's really, you know, someone may come into us and say, okay, I only want an in the ear hearing aid. But then when we do their hearing test, we determine that it's really not appropriate for them. Um, so we have to have that discussion. So, you know, really to determine which type of hearing aid would be most appropriate for you, uh, we, I would recommend going for a hearing test and having that discussion again, whether it's at our facility or another um, hearing care professional. Okay, is there any other questions about hearing aid? We, we have a little more content about other devices that can be used to keep you safe in your home if you're not hearing device um, alerts, as well as how to do better in movies if you go to the theater for movies or live shows on Broadway um, and other off-Broadway shows. I, we can jump into that or we can maybe just take a few more. Anyone have any verbal questions they wanna ask? I see Sandra raised her hand. Is there anyone else? Go ahead, Sandra. Uh, hi, um, how can we access the first more basic session that I missed? Um, because I'm assuming that that will cover the um, in, inner versus outer aids in a little more detail and other issues you mentioned. How do we okay, so that's on the RSS YouTube channel. We can access that channel um, by going to rssny.org and there's a link right on the front page. When you get to the YouTube channel, you just put in the word, I think it's hearing, um, and you should be able to find it that way if you have trouble. You can send an email and I'll just put it in the chat to, well, it's not oh, letting me open the chat for some reason. Okay, here we go. To info at rssny.org. Okay. And just tell me what you need and we'll get you the link. Okay, any other questions at this time? Sure, Vivian, go ahead. Have to unmute yourself. Oh, this is a na naive question. When, if you are hard of hearing, you take out your hearing aids when you go to sleep. What happens if there's an emergency? Ah, that was a great question and kind of segues perfectly into uh, material that Carolyn will discuss. So was, I, I think that's a, a great question. Um, so Carolyn, if you want to take that away. Sure, okay. 
<laughs> uh, give me a second to just share my slide. Am I sharing my slide? No. Am I still sharing? Yes. You're, you're I am the, still sharing? Yep. You're on the advanced technology connectivity with hearing aid slide. Okay. All right. Move down. Okay. So I wanted to introduce you to a broad range of products out there um, that can work independently of hearing aids to keep you safe in the home, especially if you're sleeping at night and you may not likely will not hear a fire alarm alert, a carbon monoxide alert, the doorbell, a cooking timer, or even water running. That's a very common issue with people with hearing loss, even if, um, you know, maybe not so severe, but we'll leave the water running because it just becomes background noise. You don't notice it. And then you go back to sleep and the next thing you wake up in the morning and there's a flood all over the bathroom. Um, so on here, we have different products. Um, I'm gonna hold up one here. I don't know how well you can see it, but this is just an example of a alerting device that is trained through using different sensors in your home. The sensors will listen out for a fire signal, um, a smoke detector signal, doorbell signal. And when it receives, this is a receiver, when it receives the information, this strobe light will flash. And then you can, that's one way to be alerted visually. So you can't hear well, you wanna look for products that can alert you visually or can alert you through touch by shaking your bed um, is another, or like a, a iPhone watch that might, might vibrate or your cell phone or your smartphone might vibrate, okay? So this is a, comes with a flashing strobe light. Some of them, there's so many different options out there. Some of them just come with a shaker. So this is a circle disc device that you could put under your bed at night that's connected to the receiver device. And when the alarm goes off, it will vibrate and shake and wake you up. Ideally, we you will show would, the companies that where you can get them. What was the question? Did you say that that would let you know if there was um, smoke? You know uh, the smell. Some if you can smell if you if you have pores. Yes, yes. So um, essentially, I don't, I don't have it right here, but so these products are designed to listen out for different alerts. And if you want protection for not hearing the smoke detector, you can select one of the items, one of these devices that will listen out for that smoke detector sound and then alert you either visually through the light or through touch. So it can do any of the alerts. Uh, you just have to be selective about which product you're getting because not every product does all of them. Like some of them will only do the smoke detector and the carbon monoxide. Other ones are more advanced and will do not only all of those two things, but also the alarm clock. It will wake you up if the, if the alarm goes off and you can set it up, it's like, a, it's a clock. So we have that on the upper left side. Um, and there are even products that will alert you if the doorbell is ringing, uh, if the cooking timer goes off, there are other products like here's a small little, I'm holding up now a small little rectangle device that is a timer and it has a little clip there. You can wear it on your waist or clip it to your shirt. And then when you're cooking, you could set the timer for five, 10 minutes. And then you can also set it up to vibrate and or flash to let you know that your something you're cooking on the stove is ready. And you could walk around the house, the home with that. Okay, so this is a very low tech option. And then there are other more advanced options that you could select. CHC educates people about these products, but we don't sell them. And there are three or four vendors that we are comfortable with you contacting. They have a website, they have a 1-800 number, they have email and chatting features. So you can also chat with them through the website and discuss your needs. Um, and I recommend that and they can guide you on what might work best for you. Okay, so I highly recommend it. 
Um, so that's what I wanted to share. There are also some features if you're savvy enough using a smartphone. There are some features available on both iPhones and Android phones in the accessibility category in your settings of the phone that can, you can activate the feature called sound recognition or sound notification for Android. iPhone calls it sound recognition. And you can essentially program your smartphone to listen out for you because the smartphone is a microphone. And it basically is, is, has software where you could select, listen out for the dog barking or listen out for the doorbell. And then when that happens, the phone will send you a message to the phone and or your smartphone watch that something's happening in your environment and you need to, to address it. It's a little involved on setting it up, but there are a lot of YouTube videos about it. And um, we can also come back and do a session on that if that's something um, Margie thinks your, your group would be interested in. So that's available too. I use it a lot personally. I use the door knocking, I use the dog barking. I try, I tend not to use the fire and siren and smoke because um, those are really serious alerts. And I prefer to use the hardwired version, um, the ones that literally like plug into the wall, they won't run out of power um, and they're just more uh, hardwired to your, to your home's alerting system. Okay, that's what we want to share with you. I know we have very little time left. Um, I did want to let you know there are other devices that can help you with hearing better on the phone or the TV that may or may not work with a hearing aid. So sometimes a first step instead of a hearing aid might be to hear better the, the phone or the TV. And there's a slew of products available. Like this is just one of them. This is an example, it's called a sound box. It's literally a speaker box that plugs into your TV and it's portable. So you can bring it back to wherever you're sitting in your living room or your bed and bring it right close to you. And it has an audio adjuster, but it does also work with hearing aids. Um, if you have the T coil setting that Shelby spoke about. So these are just some, I guess, great starting products that might get you on the path to start addressing your hearing loss. And they even have headsets available that will amplify the sound of the TV. Can I ask a question about- And also about, help with, with um, the sound you might not be getting. Yeah, sure, go can ahead. I ask, it's, a, it's a question that um, I wonder. So using all of these headsets, like for the TV and for all of that, does that potentially make your hearing worse because you're having loud sounds sort of like in your air all the time? Do you have to be very careful about like what volume level you use so that it doesn't contribute to hearing loss? Yeah, that, that's a great question. Um, and and it, you kind of already touched upon it that it, it all depends on the volume that you're listening at. Um, any volume in your environment, whether it's through a speaker um, or you know directly headphones, if the volume is at a level that is considered loud enough and then you're listening to it over a long period of time, um, can potentially damage your ears, damage your hearing further. Um, so it's something that everyone has to kind of be mindful of in terms of listening to um, how loud the, the levels you are at, at listening. Um, you know, certainly you can listen to it at a lower volume, or if you feel like you truly need the device to be up as loud as it possibly can. And if other people are saying, you know, you're listening to that too loud, then it may be time to address your hearing with um, possibly hearing aids or, or, or other devices. Um, but certainly, you know, anytime you're listen, listening and exposed to loud levels over a specific period of time, it can cause damage to your hearing um, and, and, and can cause further damage if you already have hearing loss. So that's something to keep in mind. Maybe that's something we can talk about more at the next session, like what those volume levels are and things like that. Sure. Cause I think mm -hmm. that that would be helpful. Absolutely, CAC has a whole uh, dedicated website actually on noise protection. And okay. um, we can definitely discuss some of that with okay. you. Okay. All right, we are at our pointed hour. Um, I hope this has been helpful to everyone. I think it has just based on the questions. Um, these guys, these women will be coming back again. Uh, we'll probably schedule something for 
you know, we'll talk about it, but maybe the next month or so, um, because I think we have a, a group of people that are really interested in this. So thank sure. you, everybody. Thank you to both of you for a wonderful mm -hmm. session. And okay. I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you for having us. We look okay. forward to coming yeah. back. Take care, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.